I've already set the camera up. So we've got a shot ready to go because you don't need to watch me faffing around composing it. Notice I'm using one of my old friend, Mr. Tripod. One of my old friend, I'm using my old mate, Mr. Tripod again. Why is that? Lens babies are very, very fiddly things to use. And it's so much easier if you can set your shot up, get it all level, get the composition ready, and then take the picture rather than be faffing and fiddling. So what do I mean by it's tricky? Well, remember, we can rotate this front of the lens in all kinds of directions, thereby moving that sweet spot all over the place within the picture, as well as focusing with the ring front to back. So the shot which I'm thinking of doing is, you see on the front of the pub, we've got the door at this end, and then we've got the name of the pub, the Cricketers, up on the wall. So I think that should be the focal point of the picture. That's where I want people to look. That's where I want you to look. We've got a tree off to the left against that lovely blue sky. So I'm going to pop that on the left hand side and have it a bit soft and fuzzy. So the whole sort of swoop of the picture kind of comes in like this towards the door and the name of the pub. I've got an F4 aperture in here at the moment, which is going to give me a fairly shallow depth of field. So therefore the effect of the lens baby sort of motiony blur tunneling in is going to be quite strong. Now you could try doing this with your live view in the back. Personally, I find it easier to look through the viewfinder because live view, particularly on a day like this when it's sunny, can be quite hard to look at. So looking through the viewfinder right now, it is completely soft and fuzzy. So I need to think where in my composition is the word cricketers in that door. It's kind of towards the centre, actually, <clears throat> he said in a squeaky voice. So I'm just going to move the front of the lens, baby, so that I can see that sort of point of sharpness sort of starting to head towards where I want it. At the same time, you've got to adjust the focusing ring just a little bit to make sure it's sharp. And it is fiddly. It can be very fiddly. And this is why I strongly recommend using a tripod, just put my hands over here to cut the light out because it is so difficult to, oh there it is, there it is, there it is, the word cricketers is lovely and sharp, right, okay. I've got my focus set, the next thing is your exposure. Because there are no electronics, you have to do all your exposures in full manual mode. White balance, it's sunny, so I'm going to put it on the sunny white balance, I'm only going to shoot a JPEG, I'm not going to do RAWs and things, I'm just going to shoot a JPEG. Right, now looking through the viewfinder, I've got a, I can check my light meter. In fact, I can bring it up on the back here and you can see it. So right now, we've got at a 60th of a second, notice it says F0. That's because there are no electronics on the lens, baby, to tell the camera what the aperture is. So that's why you're fully manual. You've got to do this, controlling the exposure with the shutter speed. So to bring the exposure correct, I just need to move my line of dots to the right, off towards the minus. Here we go, speeding it up, and eight thousandth of a second, it says is the correct exposure. Think, this is a white building, it's quite bright, that might fool the light meter, so I'm just going to play safe and give it an extra stop. So I'm going to give it plus one of a stop, so that's going to be instead of an eight thousandth, a four thousandth of a second. Here we go, my shot's all lined up. I've already done everything I need to do, so all I've got to do is squeeze the shutter, and there's our picture. That looks really nice, the way it's sort of funneling you into the front of the pub. Now, if I want to change the aperture, oh, it's quite warm, I shouldn't have worn my jacket. I've got to take it out the front of the lens. So, we have a little magnet here, which comes as part of the kit, and it's like a little top of a film pot on there, and that's where you can keep all your apertures. So I just pop my little magnet end, that little silver bit, in there. And there is the aperture out of the lens. How agricultural is that? That's why this thing suits me so much. And if you can see, there's a little tiny four on the front of it. That's because that is the F4 aperture. Actually, you can take a shot without an aperture ring in it at all if you want. And that gives you a very, very shallow depth of field. Let me just do that for you. So. Here we go, just take the shot again. Now, obviously, I've taken the aperture out, so the aperture's got as wide as it could go. Therefore, more light is coming in, so I've got to adjust my exposure again. Four thousandth, let's get it back up to an eight thousandth. With the lens wide open, that's only just about. Yeah, it's okay, 
I've got away with it. But that's like right at the extreme of what the camera can cope with. And I'm already on my camera's lowest ISO, which is 200. But as you can see, when you flick between those two pictures, even between f4 and no aperture at all, which are both very, very wide, there's still a difference in the sort of blur and the amount of depth of field and the way it pulls it in. If you want less of the effect, then you need to use a smaller aperture. Let's just tip this one. Look, so here we go. Here are all my aperture rings in my hand here. There's an f2.8, an f5.6, an f16. I want an f22. There we go. So there is an f22. It's tiny, isn't it? It's a minute, minute, minute little hole. So let's just stick it in my mouth because I haven't got enough arms and legs and hands. Put those back in there because I don't want to drop one and get mud all over it. So all I've got to do, pop it on my magnet, like that. Oh, sorry, I'm going to do it the other way around so the numbers are on the outside. And just push it in there, stick my finger on it. And there's little, oh, I've done it wrong, here we go. There we go. And there's little magnets that hold it in. It doesn't matter putting your finger on the aperture because basically all it is is a washer with a hole in the front. Now let's take the shot again. Obviously with a little tiny aperture like that, depth of field has got bigger, but there's not very much light going into the camera. So again, got to adjust the exposure. So, and it's quite hard to see because there is no sort of depth of field preview going on. Well, there is a depth of field preview going on because you can see the depth of field, but it's made my viewfinder very, very dark because of that tiny aperture. It's not like an ordinary lens, which allows you to see brightly all the time. Right, sorry, I've got to look at this for a moment while my eye adjusts to how dark that is before I can even read the exposure. There we go. Right, plus one, I said, didn't I? There we go. I don't need to refocus or anything because the point of focus is the same. All I'm doing is changing the depth of field. There we go, as you can see again. Wow, big difference. Between the no aperture and the f22, there is a big difference, but you've still got that effect and that kind of lovely ethereal, slightly bizarre colors that are going on there.